Whoa, back again, fellas. It's been a month since I dropped that last NFL preview video. A lot of things changed since then. <laughs> a lot of things changed for the worse. Major injuries across the league. From the Nick Chubbs to the Trayvon Diggs, but nothing bigger than Aaron Rodgers, right? But this is what the NFL and the players agreed to, man. More games, less preseason. Injuries gonna happen, but it's time for me to bring up who I think is the top five teams at this point in the season. And at number five is the Cowboys. They beat out the Kansas City Chiefs for this spot. As I told y'all in the last video, man, it's gonna be rough for Mahomes, man. Because it's only him and Kelsey. He don't have nobody else to throw to. I told y'all Tony ain't the number one receiver, so um, maybe they make a move in the trade line, who knows? But I don't see them getting out of the AFC with that group of receivers that they have. So number five is the Cowboys. And next to the 49ers, they have the second best defense in the league. So they're not really relying on Des Prescott. And that's probably the best thing for this team because even though he a plus $100 million quarterback, all you have to do is Alex Smith the offense, man. Just game manage and let the defense go to work. I thought with Trayvon Diggs gone, it was going to be a little slippery in the secondary. But with that front seven and with Michael Parsons applying pressure, that secondary don't have to hold up as long as needed. And it showed against the Patriots. So I got the Cowboys at number five. They had a little, a little stumble at the Cardinals and they got ran all over. So we're going to see how this run defense is going to hold up against 49ers this week. At number four, we have the Miami Dolphins. And as I said before, man, this team goes as tours goes. Explosive offense that's designed by, look, an African-American coach in, in McDaniels. Props to the brother. But he allowed Tua to get the ball out quick, try not to allow him to get hit and take any kind of unnecessary damage. But they got a little exposed against Buffalo, man, with, with their corners being more physical on their receivers. You know, and, and people got ahead of themselves when they put 70 on Denver. You know, when they put 70 points on the Denver Broncos. Everybody was like, man, could they be one of the greatest offenses and of all time? Nah, they ain't the greatest show on turf. Neither did the old seven Patriots, bro. When you got a top offense of all time, you always find they have a Hall of Famer on the center. And Tua ain't that. You can't expect them to carry a team let alone with a defense that's not looking so good right now. At number three, we have the Buffalo Bills, which to me is the best team in the AFC at this point. No doubt about it. They have all the talent on both sides of the ball, even with Tredavious White out for the year. But what you lose in one, you gain in another with Von Miller coming back to practice this week. So who knows, man? He'll make a big difference, man. But my biggest concern was Josh Allen. Can he take the next step? Because he still takes too many hits for me, but... And they talk about Mahomes playing backyard football, man. He the king of it with the turnovers to show for it. But one thing the Bills got going for him is the weather was starting to get a little colder. And they played no team with a winning record until they played the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So they could get an upper hand on the AFC Conference, man, where home field advantage is going to be key. Believe that. At number two, I have Philadelphia Eagles. They're not the same potent offense as they was last year, but they're a balanced team nonetheless. I guess the new offensive coordinator got him off to a slow start, but you know what I'm saying? Look like it's starting to gel back. And even Hurts and Jalen Brown are starting to get on the same page again. DeAndre Swift saw him what he could do behind that offensive line. That's pretty much the best in the league. And on defense side of the ball, that D line, man, that's they're official. And they got some serious in Jalen Carter. He fell right in their lap in the draft. That secondary might not be as strong as last year, especially with Gone or gone, but like the front defense of seven the Cowboys had, Philly could apply that same pressure. to get the hell up on the Rams and then the Jets. Miami is the big one though, so we'll see. At number one, and everybody knows this, who is number one on this list, man, San Francisco 49ers, which I think is the most complete team in the NFL, no question. And they're the most physical, and it started with their defense. And, and tell you the truth, this defense remind me of that 49ers defense when he had Patrick Willis and, and Bowman, man. And Alden and Justin Smith on that D-line. I, I mean, they just wear you down the whole game. Now fast forward to the day, they have Bosa, Armstead, Fred Warner. They have the safety, Ufunga. I mean, <laughs> they're, they're going to be a tough out, man. So now let's bring it to offense. Kyle Shanahan always was a run-first coach. 
with the blocking schemes and, and, and whatnot. But what he never had was a player like Christian McCaffrey. And he's a bona fide MVP candidate right now in the season. But what makes him even more dangerous is that they don't even need him to be a high value running back because you still got Debo Samuels and George Kittle with that offensive line. So they're not even overusing him. And then I got to give props to Brock Purley, man. I, I know I shitted on him on that last video, but the dude playing damn good. And him and his receivers, Debo or you, all of them on the same page. And Shanahan letting him sling it too, bro. More than he let Jimmy G did, so. But as I say, man, health and luck plays a big factor in these football games. And it's still a long season, but for right now, this is my top five power rankings. For sure, I'll be with y'all next time.